there are a lot of concerns, clearly, and people are coming to Parliament Hill to express them. And on the leadership, the report about what did go well and did not go well in the 2021 campaign. We're going to talk about all of that with the power panel back uh, again. And, and Andrew, I'll start with you this time since you didn't get a chance to speak. And thanks you, thank you all for listening in on that. What is your take on Mr. O'Toole's comments and his performance? Let's start with the, with the convoy aspect of things first, and we'll move on to the performance review later. Right. So, I, I mean, part of the, the, the challenge that Aaron O'Toole has with his message tonight saying we need to bring Canadians together is he's got difficulty bringing his own party together. And we've seen, you know, the, the elements of the Andrew Shears who continue to undermine his message as he attempts to, to bring to a more, um, uh, you know, a more moderated approach in terms of how he wants to see this move forward. But, but there's a couple of issues here that, that I think we just need to put on the table here. This is a, a, a convoy of anti-vaxxers. This is a convoy of uh, people who, even if the federal government removes the mandate, will still be in the same position because the Americans won't let them cross the border without a vaccine. There is nothing fundamentally different from what I can see in terms of what this particular set of protests are than what we've seen in Ontario over the last several months uh, with the anti-vax rallies that go on almost every weekend reasonably large crowds, the complete circus in terms of uh, the number of different uh, groups that have tagged in, uh, and the, you know, the extreme rhetoric that goes with that. So do you think the other curiosity, of course, is, with them? well, it, 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 absolutely, it's a mistake to be agreeing to meet with them. And, and I think the other mistake that he's made, and I found it curious, is that he was condemning the lockdowns. The lockdown here in Ontario is imposed by the Conservative leader, who is the Premier of Ontario. It's not imposed by Justin Trudeau. So there's just so many mixed messages that they're trying to get through that are just not working. If he goes back to, you know what, we're all trying to do our part. Those who aren't vaccinated should go get vaccinated. Do your part to help us get through this and get those lockdowns uh, removed. Until he gets that message and cleaned up within his own party, it's pretty hard to see how he's going to be able to provide national leadership on this. Amelie? Listen, I think it's really interesting that um, the other thing that he was talking about during his press conference is uh, the difficulty of the Conservative Party uh, to reach uh, Canadians, uh, Asian Canadians, uh, racialized Canadians. And I think it's fascinating because he says, you know, we want to work on that. But exactly what happened in this press conference is why he's doing it wrong. Um, it's completely unfathomable to want to read, you know, it, you cannot try to rebuild the trust between the conservative parties and racialized Canadians on one hand, and then meeting with a convoy that has been partly organized by people who are affiliated with white supremacist groups. You cannot do that. What you can do is stop pretending that truckers are mar a marginalized group that don't have access to lobbyists in Ottawa, which he has been saying. Of course they do. And so meeting, very notable meeting with truckers is not something that needs to happen at the end of this convoy happening in the capital. It absolutely does not have to happen in this way. The fact that he's, the question is posed as, are you going to meet with the truckers who are part of the convoy arriving in Ottawa and him participating in this political circus, I'm going to be very blunt in my choice of word, is the problem. He couldn't meet with trucker association any other way. But for him to be, no, I'm going to be doing that as the convoy arrives in Ottawa is giving tr credibility to the convoy's organizers who have been peddling messages that are really harmful, harmful to this country. So he says he recognizes that some of those organizers are harmful, but yet he, he kind of like leads legitimacy to the political circus that they're reporting on by pretending that he can only meet with truckers when that con that con that specific convoy arrives in Ottawa, and that's his problem with that message. And David, your assessment—you know—clearly he has to check some boxes here, appeal to the base, try to be more of himself. Uh, but do you think he did more damage than good in these last in these last comments? Well, I mean, it, it was difficult to follow and and to 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 piggyback on on Andrew's comments. I mean. First of all, uh, and Jenny's also, Jenny's saying three positions in four days. And I think this was 
basically about trying to reposition himself because Pierre Poiliev and Andrew Scheer have taken the entire uh, space on this issue on the Conservative Party side of things. And I don't think Pierre Poiliev and Andrew Scheer are checking in with the leader's office to vet the comments before uh, they're made. So I think there's there's a lot of survival here in play for, for uh, Aaron O'Toole. Plus, I think it's Christmas in January for uh, Maxime Bernier and and the PPC. Uh, this 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 plays right right into his wheelhouse. And also, I cannot reconcile. I was listening to this, you know, and I cannot reconcile this with. Okay, yes, you can peacefully protest. Yes, you can disagree with mandates, and in a democracy, you can voice your opinion. That's fine. But also, what? How do you reconcile that with provinces like Quebec, where we have been facing a we're beyond the brink in terms of the capacity of our healthcare system, and half of the cases are generated by people who weren't vaccinated? How can you reconcile that? What about speaking for those persons, the persons that have had their cancer treatments postponed? the 90% of truckers who have been vaccinated and are still doing their jobs, uh, the, the people, the, the 22 months of hell that our healthcare professionals, healthcare workers have been going through and are still going through right now. So I have a lot of problems reconciling what I heard tonight with that. And the final point, Neil, is when we're talking about grocery store shelves being bare because of this, I don't know about my colleagues, but this has been in place since what, January 15? And I've been doing my groceries, you know, without any problems since. So, and I haven't heard anything, at least in Quebec and around me, that there's this food shortage uh, here in Canada. So maybe tone down the rhetoric as well. But yeah, if you want to protest and you want, you're against, but there is a Trumpian January 6th feel to this, and that's dangerous. Well, we certainly hope it doesn't get to that point on the issue of the coming report and looking at how the party and its leader performed back in 2021. You know, we heard Aaron O'Toole say there, uh, you know, I support truckers. I will always stand by truckers and their livelihoods and other, you know, Canadians as well. But this is a man, as we've said, who is clearly fighting for his own livelihood and his job in the political sphere. So, uh, Emily, let me start with you for this for this part of the, the questions. In term, you know, he he seemed to be a little more forthcoming than than uh, Mr. Cumming was in a conversation we had before the show uh, about this report, talking about the things he he could do better and being more natural and reaching out to different communities, as you said. Did did you hear anything in there that suggests a, a real shift? Well, no, I think he's he was just. Um basically taking in uh, the the reports uh, the reports finding and saying that he will look at that with uh, with, with with his party uh, I, I do however as I was saying a little bit earlier it's clear that the message hasn't been assimilated just because of the you know the decision that he's had, that he's made in terms of of this convoy uh, but it's going to be interesting as well to see how much of that the the full detail of that report are going are, are going to come out. We're only seeing you know the outlines, uh, but it personally very interested to know more in terms of what the actual mm -hmm. content of the report is saying. We've only you know known that it's been the last couple of days of the campaign has been bad and that he needs to reach to new Canadians, but we don't have much more information than that at this point. The other problem that he's dealing with though is the universe of accessible voters for the Conservatives continues to shrink. And so unlike the NDP or the Liberals that actually have a fairly large, although overlapping pool of voters that they can draw on, the Conservative universe is shrinking. And so I think that he is being torn between that desire to try to reach out, expand that, which requires a more moderated approach, and at the same time play to a, a highly motivated and engaged base that wants a very hard, firm uh, set of positions. That's a tough spot for him to be in. But he knew that when he ran for leadership. I have to leave it there. Andrew, Emily, David, Jenny, it was a great conversation. I really appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you. Small fringe minority of people who 
are on their way to Ottawa or who are uh, holding unacceptable uh, views uh, that they're expressing do not represent the views of Canadians who have been there for each other. Let's take the temperature down. Let's propose solutions. Let's make sure nobody loses their house, their family, their livelihood in a crisis. Okay, political leaders addressing the Cross Canada convoy, protesting COVID restrictions, public health mandates, and the federal government. That convoy arriving on Parliament Hill tomorrow and into Saturday. There are some concerns, obviously, about what could happen when it gets here. But what do we make of the political response? It's Thursday. I'm here with At Issue, Chantelle Bear, Andrew Coyne, and Althea Raj. Good to see everyone. Obviously, lots of different parts of this story. Um, maybe we will start with the Prime Minister and his comments uh, from yesterday. I, I think a lot of people People were um, asking questions about how far he went, too, in, in talking about the groups that we are expecting to show up on Parliament Hill. Um, Chantal, was there any risk in, in his comments? Mm, I think the risks are uh, fairly small in as much as uh, this is uh, the organizers of this protest seem to go out of their way to provide comments, uh, as in we are going to ask the governor general to dissolve parliament and appoint us to rule the country. Uh, we will not leave until every uh, health measure in every province and every city is done with, uh, go down the list. Uh, this is so far off from uh, a protest from the 10% of truckers who are not vaccinated that uh, I don't think there was much of a risk to Justin Trudeau there. Okay, so let's let's flip to the other side there, and I'll come back to you, Chantel, for your take too. But, but Andrew, in terms of how the Conservatives are handling this, whether it be what Mr. O'Toole said today, uh, obviously calling for no violence, uh, or things that his MPs have said. Well, let's start with the MPs, and we're not just talking about, you know, fringe backbenchers here. We're talking about people like Pierre Poilievre. We're talking people like Candace Bergen, uh, who have been uh, giving aid and comfort to the rally itself. Uh, and it is hard to winnow out the sort of good-hearted but confused uh, um, protesters when some of the organizers themselves, as Chantel mentioned, have been spouting and not just uh, uh, lunatic the theories about how the, co the government and constitution works, uh, but in some cases, uh, you know, media contacts have been making uh, terribly vile attacks on journalists. And in some cases, some of the participants have been uh, spitting on them or attacking them physically. Uh, why any conservative MP would uh, want to get anywhere within a thousand miles of that kind of group? Uh, with the potential for things to get much worse on the weekend uh, is a, a, a bit of a mystery, except that you have a faction within the Conservative Party that sees um, advantage in uh, appealing to this group or, or who are at the very least concerned that the, that, that group is going to be going towards the People's Party. Uh, Mr. O'Toole himself uh, today was, uh, I think, uh, not exactly on, on message in terms of distancing himself and his party from that kind of approach to things and those kinds of views. Uh, he seemed, if anything, to be cozying up to them in his own way. Uh, this is not going to be good for the Conservative Party in the slightest. This is this is going to lead the party into a very bad way. That This is not where the general public of Canada uh, wants to be anywhere near. Well, that's what that's what I find perplexing too, Althea, is that the vast majority of Canadians do not reflect the kinds of things that, that are being said here. They support vaccine mandates and are vaccinated. That's true. Um, I think there's a few things at play. Let's start with Aaron O'Toole. I think what we saw this week is that there is a leadership vacuum in the Conservative Party. And so you have people like Andrew Scheer and Candace Bergen and Garnet Genuis and, um, and Pierre Polyev who've come in and who've filled the void trying to direct the party where they want it to go. And Mr. O'Toole very early in the week, I think it was on Monday, staked mm. out a very clear position refusing to say whether or not he was going to meet uh, with the truckers, actually saying that he didn't think it was the leader of the official opposition's role to meet with any protesters on Parliament Hill, and refusing to say whether or not he supported them. And then again, very similar to the election campaign, uh, there was pressure. They had very uh, interesting, rambunctious two days of caucus meeting, and he comes out with a new position where 
he will meet with some truckers, not the organizers of this group, because for the reasons I think Shanta had outlined, uh, and he will not meet with them on Parliament Hill, but he will meet with the truckers off Parliament Hill somewhere, surely we'll have a photo opportunity, um, to convey a message that he wants to convey, which is really to have it on both sides, to be right. supportive right. of the truckers' movement, but also warning, you know, please be peaceful demonstrators. We don't want... Um, any extremist, white nationalist, racist, misogynist uh, comments on Parliament Hill. Chantal. Okay, there are two facts that uh, seem to be absent from uh, the discourse on both sides of this. The first is the 90% of truckers who happen to be vaccinated, fact. The other fact is, suppose tomorrow, and it's not going to happen, that Justin Trudeau suddenly caves, he won't that will not get a single one of the truckers who are demonstrating and coming to Ottawa on Saturday across the border because mm -hmm. the same rule applies to them right. as they cross the border. That's right. One, on the politics of it, when your deputy leader, your predecessor, and your finance critic do not wait for your cue to fan fires that will be burning your own party, you have lost all moral authority, and that is the only comment I can make on Aaron O'Toole at this point. I'll just end with you, Andrew, and then we're going to talk more about Mr. O'Toole in the next block. But is this not a lesson, though, that the Conservative Party should have taken from the election? Because this is the way that the Liberals sort of played them on some of these issues during the election. Well, and, and from before the election, from the Yellow Jackets, yeah. the, 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 you know, that business. Uh, the, the, you've got a section of the party and a section of the parliamentary caucus, uh, including the met people we've mentioned, uh, who are quite willing to play with this kind of fire. And they are, in my opinion, disqualifying themselves from, from public, you know, position of pu public trust. If you cannot disavow and distance yourself, uh, first of all, from the kind of extremism that we're seeing among some of the elements here. But secondly, look, there's a difference between not demonizing uh, people who are anti-vaccination or anti-vaccine mandates, and sure. people like to draw distinctions between them that I don't think are really terribly tenable. There's a difference between not demonizing them and pretending that there's some kind of valid basis to their objections uh, and saying that people are losing their jobs, you know, for no reason, supposedly. Uh, all they have to do is get themselves vaxxed. It is not in a terrible position, in position. It is not an assault on their rights. Uh, and somebody has to be able to say that without, as I say, at the same time demonizing. This this should not be that hard for people who are in politics, after all. Okay, I, I got to take a quick break. Althea, you can start us off on the next round. We'll talk more about this, but also how this is all affecting a report that the Conservative Party received today on how they fared in the last election, what's next for the party. And as we've been talking about, Aaron O'Toole, at issue is back after this. <laughs> A post-election report on the Conservative Party's 2021 campaign found Aaron O'Toole was, quote, overmanaged and overcoached by senior staff. The report was commissioned by Party Brass and said that while O'Toole started strong on the trail, he didn't connect well enough with voters. He wasn't himself at key moments. A Conservative source who attended today's caucus meeting and told our own Hannah Thibodeau that the presentation spent little time on O'Toole's own failings. So that brings us back to at issue on what's next for the Conservative Party and Mr. O'Toole, Chantal, Andrew, and Althea. As I said, Althea, you'll start us off on this one. Um, what do you make of the report? W was it a serious attempt to see what went wrong? And what does this tell us about the future of Aaron O'Toole? Uh, it was not a serious attempt to uh, really dig into what happened. Apparently, it didn't even discuss Mr. O'Toole's many flip-flops during the campaign, uh, which is kind of shocking when you think about it, because we certainly spent a lot of time talking about it. Much of the blame was laid at Stephen Harper's feet uh, for the kneecap ban and the tip line and that failure to win over um, immigrant communities and minorities, okay. something that the party knows it needs to move on. I think most uh, important what has happened over the past two days of caucus meetings, especially today, is the sheer anger uh, basically, Aaron O'Toole's caucus is turning on him, and uh, the days of his leadership are counted. Either he will decide to call a vote uh, with his caucus members, or the caucus will decide to do it for him. And at the same time that you're having caucus MPs speak very forcefully back to their leader, um, and uh, very clear cleavage is happening within that caucus. You also have writing associations across the country thinking that they're going to follow the steps of the Foothills Writing Association in Alberta, calling for an earlier leadership 
uh, review. So something before the end of June, as opposed to August of 2023. So uh, I think the, the takeaway is that Mr. O'Toole's days are numbered. So, so Possibly, what, I, question mark. Yeah. At least his leadership is coming for a vote. Well, so I was saying during the commercial that, that I... I'm only feeling that uh, this week, that I didn't feel it before. Maybe I was talking to the wrong people. But what has changed, do you think, here, Chantal, that, that now leads us to think that there there's real trouble brewing? It's not just this week. It's, it's over the past month and a half uh, yeah. from the Christmas break to today, yeah. that incredible video where he decided to put his face on what was a blatant lie about the liberals suddenly... Uh, getting ready to put you out in the cold in winter uh, in a year and a half, which I think made some of the MPs who actually would have wanted him to stay suddenly speechless. Uh, How do you defend a lie, a blatant lie? Uh, And then the events of this week just uh, are, they're a symptom of how weakened this leadership has become over the past uh, week and a half. Seriously, Stephen Harper lost in 2015, and the Conservatives are only waking up to some of the reasons uh, that they lost six years, what, seven years later? Uh, That is, you know, to to go to Altia's point, let's get serious here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, There is very little that is serious there, and a leader who allows himself to be uh, over-scripted and over-managed by staff probably is not a leader that's ready for the prime time as prime minister. Well, you would also, th- I think, expect a leader of a party, Andrew, to accept responsibility for mistakes. And, and I, I didn't hear a lot of that either today. No, I mean, it's so much larger than that. Look, the sure. problems of the leader and the problems of the lost election both have a common cause, which is that the party is divided. And the party is divided not on some large question of principle, but it's divided between a Yahoo faction that is essentially uh, unwilling to deal with reality, whether it's on things like uh, climate change or things like the pandemic and the vaccines. Um, and, and so between them and a larger faction that doesn't even know what it stands for anymore. Uh, the, the leader, Aaron O'Toole, tried to straddle that divide first serially by running for the leadership uh, in, in pursuit of one faction and then running in the campaign for, for another, for the angling towards the center. Uh, but then also during the campaign, as you mentioned, was flip-flopping back and forth even internally. But all of those are basically symptoms of this, this impossible position he's in or that he's unable to, to, to execute where he can somehow appeal both to the center and to the Yahoo faction at the same time. Uh, maybe, a, maybe a better leader could, but I suspect, you know, parties get the leaders that are representative of where the party is at. And right now this is a very confused and divided party. Uh, that has not confronted the extremist within its midst uh, and is uh, reaping the, the whirlwind because of it. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the conceit of these reports, like the Cummings report, is that it's all just a matter of better strategy and tactics. We didn't get our message out well, or, you know, we didn't do it, do outreach very well. And those are all probably true as well, but mm-hmm. they don't really get at the fundamental uh, problem with the party right now. Okay, I got to leave it there. I I feel we will probably speak about this again soon. So (laughs) thank you all very much. I appreciate it.